Vin McHugh and welcome along to this whiteboard session on uh, virtual volumes. Um, what I'd like to do is a quick overview. Uh, we're going to first of all talk about the uh, just Lunds and the traditional Lunds uh, and we'll talk about the actual uh, virtual volumes and uh, the makeup of them, how, what constitutes the, the virtual volume and how they actually work. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the actual virtual volume objects uh, and some of the business benefits as well. So, kicking off, if we think first of all of our traditional Lunds, Let's take our LUN here. What do we use LUN for? Well, we use it to store data, of course. And the second thing we do is also, we use it as an access point to your host. So we'll take a mapping to the actual host. This could be iSCSI, this could be Fiber Channel, it could be NFS. If it's your, your block, you'll present it here. It'll be seen here. We'll put our VMFS on it, and we can start loading our VMs on top of this. Now, we're all probably pretty familiar with, uh, with LUNs, and we're probably pretty familiar with some of the disadvantages of them. Where LUN limits have become less over recent years, but it still can be an issue. Um, we, if we're provisioning LUNs, what's the right size to provision? Large LUNs, smaller LUNs, we put thin provisioning, thick provisioning. Um, do we, uh, even provisioning LUNs, it could be done by a different department, so there could be bureaucracy involved in trying to get LUNs, uh, LUNs provisioned. So, what virtual volumes does, it removes the need to have LUNs. So we can provision storage without LUNs. So let's have a look at what virtual volumes can do or how they work differently. So, so a couple of key points with virtual volumes. One, we have a storage container. And what this does, it's a place to store data. So this is your traditional array, and on here we put a storage container. This is not like a LUN. Uh, a traditional array might hold one or two, it depends on the, uh, on the actual array. But this, the point of this is to store the actual data. The second point is protocol endpoint. I'm just going to put PE for short. And what this does, this manages the access to the storage container and to the array. So we're now brick. In the, in, the, in the past with the LUNs, the LUN did two parts. It stored the data and it managed the access point. We're breaking that now out into two functions. The storage container holds the data and the protocol endpoint, and we might have multiple ones, manage the access point from the host to the actual uh, to the storage container. And then we might have one for iSCSI, we might have one for Fibertran, we might have one for NFS. And this does all our load balancing and our multi partner and our failover, etc. Now, yep, one nice advantage is it breaks out into two. There's a technical reason behind this as well. As we're going to see, we'll have many different virtual volumes stored here. They're almost like little micro runs and they all need data links sessions to each of these, uh, to each of these runs. So this can quite quickly uh, accumulate and you can get quite a large number of, uh, uh, of links to each of these runs, which will quite quickly saturate the actual limits that would be, would be allowed. So protocol endpoints allow us to get, uh, get past this point. So the, uh, from the protocol endpoint point of view, we have then, of course, at our array level, we'll have our virtual volumes, VVOLs, and all our APIs. I should also mention VASA, uh, VMware APIs for storage uh, awareness. So, with VASA 1.0, didn't really do much. You could send a raw text string uh, from the array back to the host, back to the virtual center. Not a huge amount. With 2.0, there were significant improvements, and you had much better integration then between, uh, between VMware and your VM kernel and the actual array. You could, the array could send a lot more information and meaningful information back to vCenter. And this is out of band. So, I'll put in VASA here. Okay, and the point of this is now what, what we, the array can start telling vSphere the actual capabilities that it has. Capabilities such as dedupe, replication, uh, performance characteristics, snapshots, clones, and so on. And this information can all be fed back. And then that brings us to our last, our final point here, which is 
storage policy based management. And so what we can do when we're creating our VMs, let's put in some, put in some VMs here as well. This will be seen as a data store up here. Rather than looking at various different data centers or data stores and trying to decide based on capacity, etc., which is the best one uh, to put it on from a manual perspective, we can instead assign a policy to the virtual machine and let that decide where to put it. Let that look at the arrays of what's, uh, what's available and benchmark what's there and give the best one available for that particular virtual machine. So for example, I can take my virtual machine, I create it, I say I want deduplication on this. I want replication. Um, I don't care if it's clones, I don't care if it's snapshots. Maybe from an IOP performance I want, uh, or a latency performance, I want a minimum of 5 milliseconds up to a maximum of 20, 20 milliseconds for this particular VM. I can assign this, what will happen then is, I will let VMware go and vSphere go and look at my actual storage rails to decide which is the best one to, uh, to put it on. And if that is capable, if I have a, a storage community that is capable, it will assign that automatically, taking that manual process out of it giving greater efficiency. So what that does, it gives us a framework for uh, management access to the storage, uh, to the storage system. So all your data comes down through your protocol endpoints down into your storage array. Your management is coming through your VASA out of band channel. So that's a high level overview of our, uh, of our virtual volumes and how it ties together. Just wanted to quickly mention as well, when we talk about virtual volumes, or well, what are the virtual volumes? Is it a VM or is it the VMDK? Well a virtual volume is, there can be five different virtual volume types. So I'll put in VBOX. And these types can be a config VBOL. And what this is, this contains all of the metadata. So all your metadata is now stored in one config file. So a little bit different from our traditional uh, VMware list of files. What we also have then is a, a swap VBOL similar to our swap file, which we will be familiar with. Um, we will also have our, uh, our data VVOL, which is essentially our VMDK. Um, we'll have a memory VVOL. So if we're doing clones or snapshots, it will take a, we can hold the memory information here as well. And lastly, there's a, an option for other VVOL which can be vendor-specific information. The vendor can use this for specific information. And that's essentially the different types of VBOLs we can have. So although there's less of a range that we had in VMware files, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a complete set. So, the advantage of VBOLs then? Of course, we don't have to use uh, loans anymore, which... Uh, and the, uh, the provisioning of loans and the uh, bureaucracy and uh, getting that involved and the right sizing of loans, that's all eliminated and it becomes a much more automated process. The storage operations become simpler. The provisioning becomes simpler. The, um, the allocation of, uh, of storage, um, all those limits that you had with loans, all those disadvantages, they start going away, and that becomes a less of a burden on your storage team, on your IT team, and your IT staff as well. And it also means you can be quicker to respond uh, and get faster delivery as well, so your provisioning should improve as well. Your SLA delivery. You can be a lot more confident that you can now guarantee the right SLA to your customer, to your end user, to your business unit. So what they require for their application, you can put that into a policy, and that's going to adhere to that SLA, providing you have the underlying capabilities in your environment. And that's an automated process, and that takes out the manual uh, work in that process as well. And of course, then your, your resource utilization. This becomes a lot more efficient. How you're using your storage becomes a lot more efficient. 
the intelligence now and the integration that's coming between your, your vSphere, your hosts, and your storage array becomes a lot more tight and you get a lot more intelligent decisions as well. So where did they, so getting the, the right date in the right place at the right time, that becomes an automated process and you get the, the greater efficiency as well. This is a quick overview of eVols. There's lots of great information on the um, VMware website and the Compass website. Please check it out. Don't hesitate to give us a shout. Uh, check it out in the email or phone or through the website. Um, but uh, that, that, that wraps us up for today. So uh, thanks and talk soon.